Welcome to the One Up Sales Development Podcast. A podcast for new and emerging revenue leaders, whether you're in sales, marketing, or customer success. We're here for one thing and one thing only to drive revenue. One. This one goes out to all the hustlers out there on the phones each and every day, slugging it out. Whether you're adding net new logos, expanding revenue from your soul base, or renewing existing accounts, it's all about working as one cohesive team towards one cohesive go. Cross functional sales team. So if you're new and you want to be a top funnel sales dev strategist, then you better put in the work and act like one. Digital marketing, act like one. Customer success, act like one. To be the bro, act the role. I'm your host, Jackson Bill, a top funnel revenue growth leader and an everyday frontline practitioner. This podcast is brought to you by the SDU community. Sales dev, you know. SDRs, you know. Thank you for tuning in and enjoy the show. All right. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the One Up Sales Development Podcast. For today's guest, I got for you guys someone, someone real hot today, man. This guy, this guy has probably got to be the, the longest person I've chased this far. This is a year and a half in the works, ladies and gents. So this guy is the shit in the game. This guy <laughs> worked his way up the ranks. He started out doing door-to-door sales. He was named 2018 Top SDR over at Inside Sales, which is now Isant, I believe. He was also 10 bounds 2019 SDR of the year, the beast SDR. And this is out of majority of all these SDRs in the world who's been nominated, but he took them all out. He is also the, the founder and host of the podcast of Operation Growth, which is now Project Growth. And please give us a warm welcome for the one and only account executive over at Demand Base, Vincent Mantano. Thank you, Jax. Yeah, Jax, I appreciate it, man. You're, you're the man. Um, yeah, this was definitely a, a, a long, um, long, a long comment, right? We, we talked a while about this and uh, I said I was going to do it and, and we did it. So I'm happy to be here, man. And also want to mention that Jax got the new podcast set up and we're, you know, he's premiering that today. So that's, that's big news right there. Oh man, thank <laughs> you for that. You're, uh, you're, you're making me feel special, but then again, this is your episode, Vincent. It's not mine, but uh, yep, just to dive deep, I just converted my room into a podcast studio, which you'll now see in Visual 2 as well. And Vincent is the first guest. <laughs> I'm slowly well, trying to get there. Slowly trying to get there. Welcome to the new One Up Sales Development Podcast, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Well, man, Vincent, damn, finally, year and a half. What have been up to, man? What have you been up to? How is everything? Um, so just to give some background, um, uh, Jax actually hit me up on LinkedIn one day. Um, just, just randomly, I don't think we ever connected before. And he was just like, Hey, I'm in New York city, um, for some training at the time, I think it was. Um, and we just winded up grabbing some coffee as he's drinking some coffee now. Um, and yeah, we just, uh, and then, you know, he really grew with the, with the whole podcasting thing. And I, you know, we definitely agreed to, to do a podcast and, um, I love what Jax is doing in terms of even the content on LinkedIn promoting sales development. So I wanted to make sure that, uh, I got on here and uh, can help out in any way. Yeah, damn, absolutely. Thank you for that, Vincent. And you know, uh, man, I still don't remember that day just like it was yesterday. I was onboarding for Silverline.CRM and I was like, hit you up. Hey, man, uh, you're in the area. I want to catch up. I want to meet you in person. And I think we were uh, demand base. Um, we met right under demand base, right? That coffee place down there? Yeah, uh, yeah, on, four, on uh, 40th Street in, in New York City. Fuck. By Bryant Park. Yeah, it's a good spot. Dude, that was badass, and we were like, had, we had uh, matching colors too at the time, and uh, got some coffee just sitting there. <laughs> yeah, it was cool, and it was uh, and it was on a fly, right? You were boarding a plane soon or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know that's yeah, the thing yeah. about trips, man. Yeah, I, I actually uh, flew back about a few hours right after, so it was nice, and I'm glad uh, we kept in touch and made it happen. And for sure, yeah, finally, finally uh, together, man. Finally got you. All right, Vincent. Uh, so let's let's kick it off. So. For those who are listening right now, you know, if they new to the game, which is what a podcast geared towards to, and, you know, they, they haven't met you, they don't know who you are, why don't you go ahead and just give us a brief description, you know, brief, uh, who you are, what do you currently do, and just how'd you get to sales, man? Yeah, so, uh, uh, Vin Matano, I, uh, I actually, I guess contrary to a lot of sales stories that I hear on podcasts and even on LinkedIn, um, I actually knew I wanted to get into sales. And I say that because I hear a lot of stories where people are like, well, I kind of just stumbled into sales, right? That's kind of like a common 
storyline that I hear. Um, I actually knew I wanted to get into sales. You know, growing up, my dad, uh, he owned like a small business. And he always said, if you want to make money when you get older, you either open a business or you get into sales. So I, I kind of had my eyes set on sales at a pretty young age. Um, I like how it's very entrepreneurial. Like you have your own book of business, you're building your own brand, especially now with LinkedIn, it's a lot easier to do, to do that. Um, but yeah, I got into sales uh, in college. And as I mentioned earlier, like going door to door, selling like Verizon TV and internet packages, which are like the hardest thing ever. Um, and that was like a college thing that really just opened me up to sales, opened me up to facing rejection, turning objections around, things like that. All the, all the real basics of, uh, of being a, a salesperson. Um, and then started off at demand base as an SDR, knowing nothing about the space, nothing really about being an SDR in general. Um, and I think guys like you and other people creating content are doing a good job of um, even just talking about what an SDR is, what an SDR does, how important they are, uh, which is really important to, um, to young, to young kids, right. To young people coming out of college or even just, uh, in their, in their early stages of their careers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No doubt. I mean, I didn't even know about this. Like, I know exactly what you're talking about, man. Like uh, 2018 when I was about to graduate college and, uh, about to make move out of team Mobile, I was like, you know, I want to stick to sales, but what the fuck is out there? You know? You don't yeah. want to be in retail on weekends. And then later on, you come down and you find out about inside sales. And you're like, well, first of all, it's like outside sales, you know, ADP, paychecks, yep. business, business, dress up, look all nice and shit, get yep. a coffee, go to a coffee shop, your laptop, look cool, whatever. <laughs> and then <laughs> you find out. The yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you find out about inside sales, you know, like, oh, shit. That is this whole other thing where you don't even have to go anywhere. You don't Man. have to wear a suit. Yeah. And that's the traditional route. Like when I, I remember when I was in college and I would meet with my career services department, I was like, Hey, I, I want to get into sales, but I don't really know. I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know what I want to sell. I just know I want to get into sales. Um, and they would recommend paychecks, ADP. Um, in my opinion, a lot more of the more old school sale, right? Um, that's what they recommend because that's what they know. That's what they knew. That's what's what, that was what's typically available. You want to get into sales, you go through a really, and, and don't don't get me wrong. Like I heard ADP, they have they're known for their their sales training programs, Enterprise Rent a Car, right? Teaching you a really great foundation of sales. It's just that's kind of like uh, the status quo uh, for some for, for some for some universities for some students. They don't really know what else is out there, and that was definitely the case with me. And it sounds like also the case for you as well. Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, Vincent, um, I agree with you, man. Like ADP paychecks, uh, it's a great way to get started. You know, they yeah. bring you oh, out yeah. there and they said, hey, here's the phone, here's the book dials, fucking go make the appointments, you know. Yep. And <laughs> it's a great starting point. But uh, really, uh, tech sales, I, I really think that's where it's at. You know, like SDR, BDR, you go in there and, there and get your foot in the door. But more importantly is that you're now armed and equipped with all these tech and software that wasn't available before. And still till yeah. this day, man, some of them don't even use it. And I, I don't even know why they don't. So that's interesting. Yeah, and, and just think about how much of your time, not even just the product or the idea of kind of going to businesses in person within a suit, not even that idea, but just think about how much of your time is being optimized in a uh, tech sales role, right? We're working now we're working remote, working on our computer desk or your podcast setup, right? All of our, all of our touches are through different emails and different, you know, obviously phone calling, social media. It's a lot easier to get in touch with somebody. Whereas traditionally, and even still today, you talk about that old school sale, you have to physically drive up to somebody's business, hope that they're there, hope you can get in front of them. <laughs> Chances are they're not going to be there. They're not going to want to talk to you. They're not going to not going to give you the time of day. So you've not only wasted the time to go there, but wasted the time to drive there, look it up on your maps. You're wasting so much more time. Here we're at we're at the we're at our computer screen. I can go from four different companies in the matter of ten minutes, right? Sending emails, and and, and the time is just so much um, more optimized, better to, to better suit more sales, right? Yes, yes, yes. I love it. I love it. You, you, uh, you nailed it right there. And you're absolutely right. Like, man, I remember, um, I'm for what? So, tw uh, 2018 just graduated, right? Went to ADP's internship and they go, all right, man, you're going to have to go on a road with one of the guys. All right, cool. Yep. Hop in the car wheel. Yeah. Motherfucker stuck in traffic and shit like that. And, and some of them can't even prospect, right? So he comes in and I uh, kid you not, this guy started beefing with the person um with the gatekeeper you know i'm sitting there going yo 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 what are you doing man and <laughs> <laughs> i know exactly what you mean man but vincent yeah. let's let's dive deep into this so let's do it demand base talk to us about demand base what is the demand base and um you know what why do you guys exist so to say 
Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, demand base is uh, essentially a software to allow you to really, as, as marketers, B2B marketers, to help them better understand which target accounts they should be going after um, and then allowing them to take action on those insights through, through targeting, through sales, um, sales alerts and outreach. Um, if you've heard of account-based marketing, it's, it's getting a lot more popular nowadays. Uh, it's a platform to help you know, demand gen marketers, sales, salespeople, uh, really just identify which accounts they should be focusing on from a time and budgetary perspective. Nice. Nice. I love yeah. that. So how, how does that work? Is it something that's like you stick a little bug on the website and whenever mm -hmm. whoever comes in your website, that bug kind of like just scopes you out and it brings back to the mother, the mother bug and tell you about it. <laughs> a, a few different ways, actually. Um, I would say from a sales perspective, right? This is a sales podcast. We'll focus on that. Um, from a sales perspective, we use uh, intent data. So if you're familiar with intent data, it's essentially just the insights you're able to gather um, anonymously from your target accounts and their research patterns, right? So for example, um, here at Demandbase, you know, we sell account-based marketing software, right? So I can see one of my, one of my target accounts is off our website researching keywords like account-based marketing. And that's valuable to a salesperson like myself because you know, I can see if one of my target accounts is showing the signals, but not necessarily coming to our website. They're not necessarily aware of us just yet. Um, maybe they're even researching a competitor that I want to make sure I, I, I get in front of. Um, so from a sales perspective, I would say the intent data is, is really where that comes into play. Nice. Nice. I love that. So basically what we're we hearing is you're pretty much getting the inside scoop, right? And the, the people that are reaching out to now are, pretty much warm leads rather than code because they're, uh, they're checking you out. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair to say. Um, like, you know, as a salesperson, especially with this whole era of being personalized, of being very one-to-one, -one, we really can't focus on that many accounts at, at one time. Right. So we need to say, okay, let's identify the top, I don't know, 10, 15 accounts for this week that we want to focus our time and efforts on because as salespeople, our time's so finite. We talked about that earlier, right? With, with the old school sale, you can only go to four different businesses. We can only, and they're, and they're 10 miles apart each, right? So think about <laughs> that from, from a tech sale, right? We only have, you know, eight hours in the workday, let's just say. We can only focus on 10 accounts we want to personalize to. So we'll use that insights to say, okay, we'll focus on these 10 and we know what they're interested in. So we'll personalize towards that. Nice, nice. I love that, man. It's like music to my ears. Uh -huh. And you're absolutely right. You can't just... And this is exactly why there's also SDRs and BDRs, right? You got to be strategic yeah. about it. You can't, you can't hit everybody. I mean, you can, but if you do that, that's a mass blast canyon. Your uh, messaging goes out and you know, people who gets it can see the message from a mile away. It's like, this shit was automated. Fuck you. I'm not going to respond. And you only have so much time within a day to uh, pick your prey intact. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Vincent, so... Talk to me about your 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 dad, man. Uh, he sounds like he's a great guy. And you're from the best of my recollection. You you grew up in New Jersey, is that correct? Yes, sir. New Jersey. Okay. Uh, proud, proud New Jersey resident still. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> got got that uh Paula Swag there. I see. Uh, you you watch that show? Uh, what's that show? Um, what what show? Uh, Jer New Jersey. It's like uh, Jersey Shore. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jersey Shore. You, you watch that show? I mean, I've watched it. Yeah. Has, has I, would, anyone... I, I wouldn't say it's a good representation, um, yeah. but I've, but it's entertaining nonetheless. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, super long time ago. So uh long show, yeah. whatever. But the reason I asked, uh, you kind of had that Polly D swag I see too, which is totally cool. I, I dig Polly D. <laughs> has anyone ever told you that? Like um, Polly D swag kind of? Not Polly D, but I've gotten some people say some other, other things that are along those lines. So it's uh, no surprise to me. Jersey Shore? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, fuck it. I mean, the jersey store is cool, you know. Ain't all that bad. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, uh, so what? What were your dad doing um, for a living when he was growing up? Did he have like his own shop or something? Or yeah, so he, uh, uh, pretty random. He actually owned uh, bicycle shops. He was really into like bikes at the time. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, so it's pretty pretty niche. Um, and and he's always like a you know, old school Italian guy, just always working nonstop. Uh, yeah. You know, manual manual labor and stuff like that. But uh, then once, you know, department stores started popping up, Toys R Us's, uh, Dick's yeah. Sporting Goods, things like that, yeah. kind of put that uh, niche kind of business out of business, right? Yeah. Um, so that that was more when I was younger that he owned a bunch of bike shops and, and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, definitely a hardworking guy and uh, pretty pretty optimistic about things. So I definitely try to keep that in, in sales, right? It's a pretty negative job sales. You get a lot of no's. So it's really important to just stay positive, stay optimistic about things and uh, 
that's really the that's really the name of the game in sales, I think, personally. Nice. I love that. Was he uh was he selling like bicycles or was he like fixing them? Um or yeah, both. Or... Yeah, both. Um yeah, both. So he'd sell them, fix them, um, wholesale them, the whole the whole shebang. Nice. Oh, I love that, man. Reason I asked, I actually uh, purchased a bike not too long ago and had oh, yeah? quite, quite <laughs> an experience too. Yeah, I bought this uh, time trial bike, which I had to return, unfortunately, because the frame was too big. Mm. But uh, the buying process was really nice. And uh, he came in, this old guy. It was day off, but he kept the door open, took the phone call and said, come in and started educating me all this stuff. And uh, just like a sales process, you know, hey, so what are you looking to do? Um, stuff like that. And then just narrowing you down funneling you down and saying, Hey, <clears throat> based on what you told me, this is what you should probably do. And here's why. So, yeah. 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 I mean, there's a, there's a lot of similarities in different types of sales, right? Um, I think that's the beauty of it. You can be in retail sales. Like I think you were and kind of use a lot of the stuff that you learned there. And yeah. It's applicable to, to tech sales, right? It's applicable to any type of sale that you're in, right? There's definitely differences, but I think there's like key factors to grab from every sort of sale, right? Yeah. I still, I still use things that I learned in going door to door right in my in a modern day sale like like tech and software yeah no kidding hey vincent so um talk to me how did you how did you get into demand base you know i know you were doing sales before you're doing some door-to-door -door stuff but uh yeah. how did you get into demand base were you in new york at the time were you in new jersey you picked the offer and you relocated to do so uh what happened there yeah. So I, again, I, I was doing that door to door stuff. That was kind of like a college gig. I, I wouldn't say it was part of, it wasn't like a career. Yeah. Um, it was definitely a learning experience, but I, uh, demand base was my first job actually out of college. And originally I was looking at the ADPs. I was looking at the paychecks the paycoms, those old school type sales because the schools are recommending me to do that. <laughs> but I didn't really fit right with me. I, I didn't really see a fit. Um, I started spending a lot of time on LinkedIn. I was actually, I, I used to say that I was, uh, LinkedIn was my nine to five. I was on LinkedIn literally as I woke up until five o'clock PM um, after I graduated, looking for jobs, networking, reaching out to people, having conversations. I was going on a lot of different interviews and a lot of different just conversations just to figure out like, hey, I don't really know what, what I want to do. Like, this is what I'm interested in. This is, I want to get into sales. I don't really know what that looks like. Luckily, I got pointed in a few different directions. Um, came across the man base on a LinkedIn post uh, that they were hiring, looked at them, reached out. Um, applied. Um, not really sure what they did. Again, this was all new to me at the time. So I wasn't like really sure what was going on. Uh, but when I met with the team, it was super, uh, everything just kind of felt right. And, um, nice. and I started working as an SDR there in the New York City office. I live close enough in Jersey to commute. I'm only like 25 minutes away. Um, nice. And I, th I would say the best thing about being an SDR at demand base was they, they weren't they're very progressive in the fact that they didn't hold you to activity quotas, right? We had a number that they wanted you to hit, but they weren't penalizing you for not hitting an activity number. And I think that's actually a wrong thing that a lot of companies do is hold activity quotas over SDRs heads. Because again, uh, Jax, that's what we talked about. Like, Hey, people are just hitting their activity number. They're not actually putting in quality work. They're saying, Oh, well, I had to send 40 emails and I sent 40 emails. My job's done. So I actually, you know, that was something that I liked about demand bases. They didn't really hold you to that. They didn't say you had to make, you know, 20 cold calls, 40 emails, 20 LinkedIn outreaches. They were just like, Hey, we expect you to hit X amount of number of outreach, but they're more focused on the quality of that. Right. I personally, as an SDR, this is going to upset a lot of people. I, I rarely picked up the phone. I barely cold called and I saw a lot of success because I was very good at email, personalizing LinkedIn, uh, even Twitter. I was very good at, at what I was good at, right? And I didn't see that much success over a cold call. So I didn't really cold call that much. And, um, you know, I didn't have my manager yelling at me, oh, well, you hit your quota, but you didn't actually cold call this month, right? That makes no sense to me. If someone can hit their quota by 150%, 160%, 200% and not make a cold call, like, you, should, you know, that should be it. And that's, that's what I liked about the man base. They really like kind of just gave you the keys and they were just like, hey, if however you hit your number, hit your number, we'll support that. They really supported like creative outreach. They supported creative direct mails. They supported uh, social outreach. They, they supported a lot of things that were like really new at the time and allowed me to like develop into this like, you know, modern day prospector and, and see a lot of success in the SDR role. So that was, that was huge for my overall learning and development. Oh man. <laughs> yes. 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 Dude, that, that's the trouble with a lot of people around days that I see with companies, especially those who never had a sales development program, 
they're just rolling it out. And more importantly, they don't have an SDR manager. They put, yeah. the mistake is just like what you just mentioned, Vincent, they, they put a finish line there. Hey, you got to make at least 60 calls today and at least 30 emails. And what happens is that they work their ass off to hit that goal. And once they hit it, they're like, fuck this, man, I'm cool. You know? Yeah. And what happens is that takes away from the, their creativity and how they want to focus, which more should just be like, Hey, Vincent, uh, you know, we got to, we got to book at least five appointments this month. Do what we got to do, but um, it's your responsibility to make it happen. Yeah. And really just finding your own gig. And you're absolutely right. Like, uh, sure. Just because you didn't make a cold call doesn't mean you can't do outreaches because yep. every prospect or <clears throat> I should say people, every person is receptive differently. Some prefer the phone, some prefer email, some prefer just being reached out on a different platform. So I, I love that show. Hats off to demand base for letting you uh, take that route like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was definitely key. And I, and I would say like, I get, I get the activity numbers because from a board's perspective, they're saying, okay, well, we need X amount of revenue. Okay. Well, under that, how, how many pipeline, uh, how much pipeline do we need to hit that revenue number? And then under that is how many opportunities do we need? Right. And then under that is, well, how much activity does our SDRs need to hit, right? So I get, I get it systematically. And I understand that you should have some sort of idea of, hey, your SDR should be uh, doing this much activity per day because that's how it works, right? We do enough activity, we get enough meetings, we, get, we generate enough pipeline, they generate enough revenue, right? I get it. So I understand that. Um, but some companies are, are way too strict about it where they think that that's the do or die, that's the that, that's the end all be all when in reality we know that it's not. Yep. You hit it on the dot, man. And yep. you're absolutely right. They do it to a specific standard because I mean, I'm, I'm a numbers guy too. Like, Hey, this is the connect to hit ratio based on this. This is the average then vice versa. Mathematically, that's right. how it should work. However, you shouldn't <clears throat> hold it too far up there where you would uh, hold them against that. You know, when it comes down, like I even seen this one post one time. Um, I think, I'm not sure if you saw it too. Some girl hit her number and she was supposed to be promoted. And the upper level was like, uh, well, she didn't make the, she didn't hit the activity number. So they held her back for that. I don't know. Did you see that? No, that's ridiculous. Nick. That's, <laughs> ridiculous. that's that. That's fucked up leadership right there. That's what that is. Yeah. That's, that's not okay. Um, yeah. Now, if they're not hitting their number, that's going to be the first thing you look at. Yeah, that's right. Up. Why is your activity so low? Right. And that's fine. That's, that's okay. That makes total sense. It's like you're the, the only reason they would not focus on the activity number is if you're crushing your number, right? If, if I'm able to just crush my quota, but I'm well under my activity number, is, is someone really going to come up to me and say, hey, you're doing bad work? No, they're going to be like, wow, you're doing really quality work. Um, but yeah. adversely, if I'm not doing enough and I'm not hitting my quota, that's bad. That's bad. Yeah. So if, you, if, if you're in that space, you got to figure it out. You got to try new, try new uh, avenues, try different channels. If you're big on cold calling, try email. If you're big on email, try cold calling. If you do both, try direct mail, try writing a handwritten note, try social media, try something else. Because if you're not hitting your number and your, your, your activity numbers are low, that's just, that's trouble. That's not good. That's how you get, that's how you get let go. Right. That's, that's yep. in reality. That's, that's basically how it is in a nutshell. <clears throat> Vincent, I, let's dive deep into this, man. And do it. Um, I just want to say uh, in person, well, through digital congratulations by the way i know you got promoted to a not too long ago but yeah thank you this man. is this is something you've been <clears throat> working on we chatted about it a long time ago you're like i want to go ae and then um uh they actually demand base built out a route and then uh, actually made it happen for you so first things yep. first i uh, just want to say congratulations it's good stuff. thank you man i appreciate that yeah job, job well done you know it's a career working your way up there but um let's dive deep into sdr here so i know i know you uh you, you started at demand base, you're still there and not sure if they're going to let you talk about this, but uh, what, what's your tech stack of choice or something that you would recommend that, you know, that you're using that helps you, that helps you strive as an SDR. Yeah. Um, I actually like that question a lot. Uh, and, and we're, and that's okay to talk about. Um, cool. My favorite, the most basic answer, but honestly the, the most necessary tool is LinkedIn sales navigator. It is, it's the most basic answer, but it's, it's like literally, if I had to just choose one tool to use besides email, obviously I would choose LinkedIn because for me, 
that's where all the information lives, right? I wouldn't be able to send a good email if I didn't have access to this. I can find the right person via their role or department. I can find personal interests about them. You know, maybe they, um, I don't know, maybe they're, they, they listed their favorite movie or they listed their favorite sports team, right? Little things like that I can use to start personalizing my email just to show that, that, that I put in the effort. Um, you can find company news. If a company announced maybe they acquired a new company, maybe they uh, announced a new product, maybe they won an award. This is where all the information lives. You need LinkedIn Sales Navigator. It's number one tool, right? I'm not even going to include email because email is like, you know, it's free. I don't even know if you pay for email. Um, but LinkedIn Sales Navigator, number one. Uh, number two, and I think I shared this on, the, on another podcast, uh, number two, Spotify. You got to have, you got to have the music going. You got to get motivated. That's all I need. Email, LinkedIn, and Spotify. That's oh, it. Oh, shit. Nice. <laughs> okay. Spotify. Um, what does Spotify do to you, uh, do for you when you're, when you're in a zone? Uh, no, I, I'm, all jokes aside though, I do like, like if I'm in, if I have an hour blocked off where I'm prospecting, like I need some music to pump me up. Yeah. I'm not making as much calls as I told you. I'm not a real, I'm not a cold caller. I'm more of an emailer, social media guy. So I like music to pump me up. Uh, some 50 cent, 50 cent, get rich or die trying like that <laughs> album on shuffle. I'm good to go. <laughs> Um, but that gets me in the zone. But I would say a, a sleeper, a sleeper tool is um, is actually t uh, Twitter. And I, I've talked about this before. Twitter is really good because um, if your prospect is on Twitter, right, it's not that common nowadays, especially. But if they are on Twitter, um, one, you can find that on their LinkedIn profile. They've they've maybe attached it, or two, you can just Google their name with and then plus Twitter, and it'll surface something. Um, Twitter is good because it's a personal platform. However, it's, it's a lot more professional than your Instagrams, your Facebooks, right? That would be really weird if you found someone's Instagram and Facebook, but Twitter is kind of like this, this, this balance between professionalism and, and, and personal interests, right? It's, it's not, uh, it's very professional esque and it's also just showing a little bit of their personal interest. That's good because you can grab some more stuff to personalize your email. Maybe they shared something that you can re uh, reference. Um, I also use it to drop uh, videos and to drop messages on Twitter to them. If they're active, um, you have to be careful because it is a social platform, so you can't come off salesy. So what I'll do is I'll drop them a message uh, similar to like a voicemail, right? Uh, if, I, if I personalize some really great emails to you, Jackson, and I, and I know if you just read this email that you'll respond, the value prop's great, the personalization's key, it's a great email, I just need, to, I just need you to look at it, right? I'll actually go to Twitter because there's less noise on Twitter if you're active on it and I'll drop you a tweet and just be like, Hey Jax, um, I just listened to your recent podcast episode. Loved it. Shot you an email with my, with my thoughts. That's it. Um, <laughs> I don't actually want to get the response on Twitter. I don't care. I've set up meetings on Twitter before actually. Um, that's not really the goal cause it's, it's not really the platform for that. I just want them to get their attention back to my email. Right. Cause I mentioned earlier, I'm really confident in, in, in my ability to write cold emails. And if they don't view it, I can't really do anything about that. So I try to find channels to get them to view the email, right? Even voicemails. I, I do leave voicemails. I'm just not big on them. When I do leave voicemails, I'll reference the email. They're not going to really call me back, right? This happens a few times, but they don't really call you back. Um, send the email, leave the voicemail that you sent the email, right? You just want to redirect them to the email um, because they can answer that in their own time. They can read it. You've personalized it. Amazing. You know, they're going to answer, right? So I use that. I use those two, I use those mediums. Nice, nice, nice. Yes, I love that. That's that's how you do it, man. You, it, that's the thing about fucking SDRs and BDRs too nowadays. You know, um, every time when they pick up the phone or uh, they send out like an email, they they never really you know ask for their reroute <clears throat> or even like on twin, link, uh, Twitter. You know, like hey man, um, just want to get a few minutes of your time. And you're absolutely right. You always want to do reroutes. That's that's how you do it. I do that too. Yeah. Now. Hey, Vincent, uh, it's Jackson over here. Love what you're doing over at Demand Base. Congratulations. And uh, by the way, I sent you an email. Not sure if you're interested in learning more about X, Y, and Z. If so, um, please feel free to give me a, look, give me a shout. Yep. And, 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 it, and it makes you look more organized. It makes you more credible because um, if I emailed you, but then I also just sent you a, a, a voicemail the next day without referencing anything, they're going to be like, this guy's just spamming me, right? Yeah. Uh, but if I send you an email, call you reference the email then the next day maybe hit you on linkedin um it, it, with the same messaging right 
the messaging has to match. Um, my biggest thing is also referencing any previous conversations or referencing any opportunities in your, in your CRM, because again, we want to, we want to not make it seem like it's a cold outreach. We want to do a good job of, of, of putting together some context of why you're reaching out. Yep. Yeah. Always got to reference everything, man. Any, everything and everything. Uh, Vincent, how are we doing on time so far? I know. Good, man. Good. Cool. Cause uh, we want to nag you for uh, as long as possible, you know, for the <laughs> guests here. All right, man. Let's. All right. So 2018, uh, you said it was inside sales, right? Before Zen? Is that inside sales? Yes. Okay. Yep. So 2018, top SDR rated by inside sales. And of course, 2019, 10 bounds rated, beast SDR. Damn, son. <laughs> Hot. How, how did you do that? Um, the inside sales doc, the first one in 2018 by, by inside sales, uh, I was actually um, nominated anonymously. I actually, it, it came in anonymously and I didn't really know too much about it. Uh, I was fairly new to the role, but I was doing, I was doing pretty well. So that one was a bit of a surprise. Um, it was nice because there was other people that also won with me. So I got to be connected with this little small niche of 2018 winners, which was cool. Um, but the 10 bound one was really important to me. And like, that one was just, that one was awesome. Like uh, to give you some background at that point, I was at the man base for over a year, um, maybe a year and a half at that point, maybe. Um, yeah. And I, I had a really great year and I hit, I crushed my numbers. Um, my numbers were looking really great. And, and I just, and I know that with, uh, David Delaney's thing that they, they choose one winner. And I just, I honestly was really confident. Like, Hey, if he, if he just sees my numbers, like I, I know I'll win. Um, I was featured in a lot of different things too at the time. So I really wanted to win that one where the other one was kind of a bit of a surprise. And it was like, Oh, you won with, you know, five other people. Yeah. Right. Uh, this one was just one person. Uh, there was an event around it, right? The sales development uh, summit or sales development conference. Yeah. The sales development conference. Yeah. In uh, San Francisco at the time. Yep. And I winded up submitting a, uh, a, a forum and I got some nominations and I actually winded up writing uh, David Delaney, a handwritten note um, just to solidify <laughs> it even further. Like, Hey man, same thing with the email, right? What did I, what did we say about the email? I, I used yeah. other avenues to direct them. I was just sending, sending a handwritten note. Uh, just showing them how, you know, how a salesperson thinks. That's how I think now. If I want to get in touch with somebody, I'll, I'll try different avenues. Uh, I'll personalize. I'll write a handwritten note, whatever it takes. Um, and that was awesome because I was at the event live in San Francisco. Um, they announced it at the event and it was, I was one out of all the SDRs um, that were there, which was, that one was really cool. And the trophy is in the office in New York and the office is closed. So it's stuck there. So I need to go rescue it. But that one, that one meant a lot oh, to yeah. me. Damn, dude, that was sick, man. Congratulations, too, by the way. Um, I, I was there. I remember uh, well, when you told me about that. It was during my time over at, I think it was Burke Street Systems. And um, uh, I, I, actually, I voted for you, too. Yeah. Hey, um, <laughs> what, wasn't, there, wasn't there one of the events where you beat out James Baldwin? Was that the 2018 one? I remember hearing about that. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, sure. I remember here. I was chatting with Mark. I forgot where I heard from. He told me something that um, – he was, he was like up against you one one or something. And then, uh, Oh, I think we, I think we made it both one that yeah. year. Well, yeah. I'm not too sure actually, but I remember his name also in there. I think he also won too. Oh, did he? Okay. Yeah. Like I said, a few people won that year. Gotcha. I think he won too. That, that, <laughs> yeah, that he won sense. too that year. Cause I, 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 you know, fuck, I, I can't, I can't really clearly remember where I heard it from, but I, I think it was a podcast episode. I'm not sure it was on Davis or something. I think it was on Davis yeah. cause he was like, talking about it. he's like yeah man I, I kept on pushing it he was being a dashboard jockey and he kept pushing refresh buttons to check out his voice he's all like oh fuck man i hope i win with Vincent." and then he heard you won. he's like oh fuck and then he got caught yeah. up too. he's like no nah, he oh, won too <laughs> he won too yeah it's uh i'm on his linkedin right now it, it, it's that one was vote voting based yeah, so yeah. you could yeah you could see you could see the the live dashboard which was like oh you man know, yeah it got, it got intense fuck that shit is funny man um yeah hey, it James. was funny <laughs> Hey, James, if you're ever listening to this episode, man, you know we love you. Uh, big shout to that. And yeah. All love, all love. Yeah, great. Have a great relationship with that guy, by the way. Um, all right, so, listen, right now you're an AE over at uh, Demand Base. Are you still prospecting yourself as you were at, when you were in SDR2 as well? Yeah, uh, I am. Um, obviously not as oh, much at, as, as an SDR, but I, but I am. And I know that's um, – 
I think these newer AEs, because they've been coming from SDR roles, they know how important it is to prospect. And I think they're doing their own prospecting. Um, you know, you look at some more old school sellers where the SDR role wasn't that traditional path. You didn't go from SDR to AE. You came from outside sales, right? Maybe you came from ADP or something. Um, so sometimes in, in, in certain companies, that's not common. But I always thought whenever I was an SDR, I always thought that if you were able to prospect as an AE, um, similar to as, as SDR's prospect, you can generate your own pipeline. And then whatever your SDR gets you is kind of icing on the cake. Um, so yeah. I do try to make, I try to carve out time to prospect. Um, you know, some, some days you can't get to it because there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, but I really do try to emphasize that. I always make sure I'm working hand in hand with my SDR, making sure that I can help them in any way. Uh, we share, we split accounts for the week. We'll go, I'll go after one. He'll go after the other one. Sometimes we go, we go after both. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely try to prospect and, and I'm, I'm so thankful to come from an SDR because I know how to generate my own pipeline if needed. Right. Yeah, man. I, dude, I, I fucking love that, man. That's, that's how you do it, man. From the front lines for the front lines. And you know, um, I'm doing something very similar to that 10 bound full cycle, right? SDR role, yeah. campaign, campaign shit, and then rolling that's things tough. over. Uh, and we, I, so is your, your time mostly right now as an AE, uh, you can just give us a little brief um, dive into that. Are, are you pretty much set up with like, hey, you're, you got your calendar book. You're like, hey, Mr. Customer, thanks for your interest. And then you're just like nurturing them and then giving them some of the demo and pushing them down a the pipe slowly. Is that what it is yeah. most of the time? Um, yeah, kind of. I mean, you know, every sales cycle is different, right? Like, like literally yeah. every sales cycle is so different. Um, there could be some sales cycles that last in, in my cases, sometimes they last a few weeks, sometimes they last years. Right. Yeah. Um, and they also are, are trying to achieve different things. So you may have different steps, next steps. You may have different, um, you might be sharing different resources. So it really all depends. I would say like if I'm managing a full sales cycle, it starts with prospecting. And I think prospecting gets you off on a really good head start because you show them that they, that you know, you know, their business, you know, you're personalized the chances are they're going to like you already before even the initial meeting, which is, you know, people buy from people they like. So if you can get them to like you at an early stage, I think that's, that's a huge help. Um, but yeah, from there, it's like a discovery call, right? We go through a demo, personalized demo, and then there's always different areas of the sales cycle. Maybe we bring somebody else on. Um, but typically it kind of falls in that, in that realm and always trying to make sure that you're tying back your value prop to the objectives that they're trying to achieve. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Love it. Yeah. Hey, Vincent. So SDR, BDR, right? You got your sales engagement platform. You got your lead enrichment, uh, lead builder, um, sales engagement for email automation and stuff like that. Now that you're over to AE, uh, are you still using some of that still today to, you know, just having specific target accounts and just doing it? Or is that more like, Hey, you know, I will do a little bit when I can, when possible. And yeah. then, I, uh, uh, yeah, I think that's accurate. I think I use, um, like we use sales loft here at demand base. I think yeah. I use it less. Uh, definitely. I'm not really doing cadences like I once was. And actually I never really was big on cadences, even as an SDR. I know that's like, uh, not a common thing. I yeah. was, I usually just send one to one notes. Um, I never really sent anything automated. I never, I never had a cadence built out where day two, I did this day three, I did that. Um, I never, I just, I just like if I can, I just like knowing if a prospect opened my email or not. That's really yeah. all I use sales loft for. I just like hit the loft it button. I'm really not even in the platform too much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how I go about it. My approach is very personalized, very one to one. I'm not really sending out too many templates either. Um, so yeah, if I find somebody, I'll, I'll, I'll be in Outlook and I'll, I'll draft the note and just loft it. I just want to know if they opened it or not. Um, if they're sharing it, forwarding it, if it gets opened four times, that's, that's a really good sign. If they yeah. haven't opened it at all, I might actually recycle some of the, the messaging that, that I thought was great, but they just didn't see it yet. Um, so that's important to me. I don't really set up cadences though. Gotcha. Gotcha. I love that. You know, that's, uh, that's what makes you different. And for me, I, I truly believe, you know, a cadence and a sequence, it's a good starting point. It's a guide, you know, but it's yeah. not something that you, you got to live and die by. And um, for the tier B's and tier C's for that automation, yeah, because you don't want to spend too much time. But right. my experience, just like you, when you're, when you're doing that one-on-one, like you mentioned, right? Hey, you send out one email and you want to see if they're open or not. If not, you do reply bump. And when you're doing that, that's pretty much your tier A hyper-personalized. And it's like, hey, there's no unsubscribe button here because no, it's not spam. 
you're not in the campaign. I'm just uh, right. sending you one by one. And as you go, right, like maybe sometime it's past 5 p.m. Man, maybe something is just relevant that you just really want to share. Hey, Vincent, um, reason I'm just reaching out now, I heard, just saw you got promoted. And I know a lot of people is going to be congratulating you now, but you know what? Have lunch on me. Here's a $20 uh, yeah. Uber Eats, man. <laughs> that, that'd, be a, that'd be a great outreach. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Vincent, so you, 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 when it comes to S- SDR, BDR, man, you're the shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Go out there, you make it happen no matter what. And I know you shared the story a little bit on a few other episodes too, but I'd love it if you would share this here too. Talk to us about that Gary V one, man. Talk to us about yeah. that. Uh, Lay yeah. it down. Lay yeah, it down, definitely, baby. That's definitely a fan favorite. Um, yeah, so again, uh, when I was in SDR, we were, we were sitting down with my AE at the time and we were just thinking about the accounts that we wanted to go after. We found this one account showing a lot of intent, as we talked about earlier. They were, they were doing the interest. They were engaged with us in the past, previous sales cycles. A really good, really good use case. I just couldn't get in front of them. They didn't really have a large marketing team we sell in the marketing. And there was only a few people to reach out to. And um, uh, this one uh, contact, I, I sent them email. I, I, I did the phone a lot for that contact, which I don't typically do, but I just, I, I just tried anything to get in front of them. Um, I tweeted him. I sent him a LinkedIn note. I, I wrote him handwritten notes. I, was, I tried literally everything for this prospect. And at that point, you, know, you don't want to waste too much time. As I mentioned, sales time, salespeople's times are very finite. Um, so at that point, I was going to kind of deprioritize that account because if you tried literally everything and nothing happened yet, you might want to use that time on somebody else, right? So I was getting to that point. Um, and I, I kind of stopped reaching out to him. I think I sent about 12 touches, 12 emails to him, <laughs> which is a lot. For, um, and I got to the point where I was like, all right, I'm going to pause. You know, we'll, we'll pick it up in a few weeks or so. I saw he shared something about Gary V. And then I saw uh, on a different platform, he shared another thing about Gary V. So it was clear he was a big Gary V fan. Um, so I actually had Gary V's book, Jab, 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 Right Hook in my room. Yeah. Um, and figured I had nothing to lose. I just put it in a shipping envelope and just sent it to him with a handwritten note. It was just like, hey, man, saw you like Gary V. I do too. If you haven't read this book, it's pretty good. So, and I just sent it to him. Then I followed up with a personalized uh, email with the call to action in it. Um, the gift was more of a, a, a soft touch to, just to get his attention. And it worked. He got back to me right away. We, we, we set up a meeting. He came in for lunch. My rep winded up closing the deal. Um, and then uh, what made it even better, I was excited about that because I worked really hard on it, but what made it even better was he actually reached out to me a few days later. I was just like, hey, man, got the book. I really appreciate that. We're really excited to get things going with demand base. Um, I just want to let you know, I have a ticket to Gary V's Empathy Wine event. So Gary V has a wine company and he had an event in New York City. Um, and he goes, I can't make it. Do you want my ticket? And to me, that was, uh-huh. that was the coolest yeah. thing because like we get such bad, salespeople get bashed, right? We get bashed on LinkedIn. We get bashed in oh, yeah. email, over Every the phone. Day. People are hanging up on us. People are saying, I'm subscribed. We just have, we get a lot of neg- negative connotations and it, and, it, and it can be from those people that have those activity quotas and they have to, mass uh spray and pray because they'll get in trouble right um wow. and we get we get negative connotations for that and um i just thought that that really just broke the mold because here's this guy has a really cool ticket to a really cool event that i'm sure anybody that he knew would want to go to right he could he could have hit up his his friends family co-workers business partners colleagues like literally anybody would probably said yes to that right but the fact that he thought of me a salesperson an sdr who, who emailed them 12 times um, oh, to, to kind of give it to me. I thought that was really powerful. And I, I was uh, just really happy that, it, that, that, that the whole thing went down. I ended up going to the event. Gary V was there. Uh, I met a lot of cool people. I met like the, um, I've never seen Hamilton, the play, uh, but I met the, Ar- the guy who played Aaron Burr there too. So random. I was talking to him for like 20 <laughs> minutes. So random. It's a lot of cool people there. Um, and then I met Gary for a little bit, um, talked to him about how I got there with the book. And he just thought that was cool. You know, like that's right up Gary's alley. He's a big hustler. So, yeah. um, also a Jersey guy. So it was cool, man. It was just, it really just showed that like, if we do our job, right. Um, uh, we, we can make a very positive impact on people. Um, and we, if we get away from the spamming, if we get away from the shady dealings, 
you know, we're really helping people. Our, our solutions we're selling is helping people's jobs, right? We're not selling them yeah. something that's burdening them, right? We have a product that solves for an issue and that's what we're doing. So um, Ooh, I just thought that was a really, a cool story nonetheless, right? It's a sexy story, but I think like deeper, there's a lot, lot more uh, lessons to learn from there, right? There's just, like persistence, there's like, you know, positivity in sales. Like, I just think, I don't know. I like that story a lot. Yeah, man, I love it, man. Man, that's why you're SDR, BDR of the year, bro. Shit. <laughs> Breaking through the noise as finest. You know, hey, man, attack this guy. Give him a phone call. No go. Email. No go. Another email. No go. Fuck it. Ten more emails. No go. Fuck. So what did I do? A little research. Nice Gary Vee. Fuck it, man. I'll just yeah. ship this to him directly. Did you pay that out of your own pocket when you ship it to him? Yeah, it was a few bucks. <laughs> I mean, I had I had the book, so I didn't have to pay for the book. And I and you know, shipping it's a few dollars. Oh man! And depending on how much you get paid for an opportunity. Yeah. And, you know, close one business. I mean, that pays for itself. But oh way, man, yeah, that pays for itself. So. Yeah, and th- th- that's exactly how you do it. It's people who goes out there and do shit on their own and takes initiative, man. That's what. Yeah. That's the kind of SDR BDRs that you want. That would be successful. That has this eager and it has this curiosity it's like oh, it's not working i'm trying to do it i'm trying to like what what else can i do map it out and um yeah i did something similar uh when i was uh and this is just thrown out there too for before the whole covid pre for covid 10 bound has this event for uh people to come in and it was uh a career fair and i got one this one person engaged and it was like a tier a account um sent over perspectives and all that and then went code it's like did all this shit shot shot video no go phone call no go voicemail no go and it turns out she likes running fuck it man pay out my own pocket send her uh like a nice cute pink running book hey uh thought you like running not sure if you're if you need a new running book or not in case you do uh here's my gift to you and <laughs> got a response right away they ended up closing too so that's how you do it bro yeah and, and to your <laughs> point like not every company, especially in startups that the world we live in, not every company is going to have a big budget for a direct mail. Some do, right? That's fine. That's even better if they do. You have no excuse. Yep. Some don't, right? You don't always have budget to send gifts willingly. And uh, I've sent gifts a ton out of my own pocket, right? I don't spend too much, right? I find something very personal. I send to them. Uh, I, I got one deal to my AE to close. This guy was a Charlotte Hornets fan. I sent them uh, Charlotte Hornets socks, $12, sent it to him. And they you know, you may, the, the deal closed. And, and that's just like, if you can find the right opportunity to send something and it's not too much of a hole in your pocket, yeah, I would just do it if you're confident about it. Um, the cheapest thing you can do is send a handwritten note that costs nothing. I mean, yeah. you get paper, you get, you get pen, you get an envelope, a stamp is like, what, like 10 cents. I don't even know how much a stamp costs. That costs nothing. <laughs> if you want to reach someone very cheaply in a unique way, that's a very, that's a very effective way to, to do that. So. Oh man, I love that. I love that. Dude, I'm a big fan of handwritten notes. Um, started that too when I started running out of podcasts, uh, bumped up a little bit, but I know exactly what you mean. And uh, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. Not, not every company has it. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of great companies out there who offers that solution. There's Sendoso and then there's reach desk and stuff like that. But uh, again, yep. tying down to your point. Um, hey, so just before we wrap things up, Rikre, I just want to ask you something. Um, when, as an SDR and BDR, when it comes to uh, let's talk about risk when it comes to sending that personalized thing, right? Um, how do you, because you can't send it to every prospect. Do you only do that to the person that's like your super serious, someone you really want? And even though you send it and nothing happens, it's like, ah, uh, uh, fuck it, you know? How, how, yeah. do, you, how do you go again? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a really good question, actually. Because like, like you said, you can't, especially if you're paying for it out of your own pocket, you cannot, you have to be very careful who you send it to. So um, if I'm ever doing a gift like that, there has to be like a few qualifications I got to look at, right? I have to know that person is the buyer, right? So if they were in an opportunity in the past, maybe they went through a whole sales cycle a year or two ago and they just, you know, timing was off, whatever. But you know that that person, oh, there's a spider on my desk. Um, you know that <laughs> no person. Way. Put them on the screen, bro. I want to see it. <laughs> yeah, right. You know that person <laughs> is signing the contract, right? You know that person's the main decision maker. So there's no guessing around that, right? The worst thing you could do is send it to somebody and they're like, oh, this isn't up my alley right? You kind of want to avoid that. So you look in your Salesforce or your CRM, whatever which CRM you use, uh, find that right person, right? After you've done that, you want to make sure the account is in market, right? You want to make sure that you look in the notes. If they just sign with a competitor, it's probably not a good time to send a gift. 
uh, if they're coming up on a, on a contract, their contract's coming up with a competitor, or like I mentioned, you're using intent data to see like, hey, they have no tags on their site. They are showing a lot of intent actually. And this um, individual was in a buying cycle last year. And I found on her LinkedIn that she's really into um, mob movies, right? Like, I, like, I, like I'm really into mob movies, right? So you can send like, hey, um, notice you're into mob movies. Send, you can send something that's like 10, if you could find something that's 10 to $12 as like a gag gift yeah. Yeah. to send to that individual. And there's not a lot of risk in that because one, you did all your research. You know she's the buyer. You know uh, the thing you're sending her, she's going to like because she, she has it on her LinkedIn, right? I, I would avoid sending anything that you, you aren't aware about. And three, they're, they're, showing, they're showing interest, right? So there's a lot of qualifications. I, I would agree with you. You can't send to everybody. You want to you wanna check everything. You want to check your CRM. You want to check uh, the tags on their site if, if you're selling software. And then you want to check, um, check the person's profile because if you're sending something personal, that's going to get through to them. You can spend $5 on something, but if it's, pers- <clears throat> if it's personal, you'll get the response, right? You can spend $100 on something they don't care about, right? Like you, you do send them a bottle of wine. That's really nice person can get it and say, well, I don't like wine. I don't drink at all. Uh, and then you just wasted a hundred dollars. Yep. <laughs> oh, Vincent, that was fire right there, man. Uh, if that wasn't the price of a vision, not sure what it is. And you're absolutely right. Dude, I, I learned the hard way. And again, just another quick example, had an inbound request, right? Hey, interested in SDR training. Sure. Chat a little bit. Turns out, uh, he just got like two SDRs, whatever, but, um, not really have the budget and I sent him like, uh, yeah, literally it's not too much to send him the book, by uh, outbound sales, no fluff, but Ryan restaurant, um, just went down the gutter, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it happens, right. It, it, it's happened to me before too. You're going to misfire sometimes. It's, 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 uh, it's definitely natural. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No kidding. All right. Hey Vincent. So, uh, let's wrap this up, man. I just want to ask one final question. I don't want to take too much more time than we don't have to, but, um, so 2018, SDR of the year, inside sales. 2019, 10 bound, beast SDR. People come in, SDR and BDRs nowadays, young, I'm 22, I'm 23, whatever. I just graduated. Oh, man, I'm going to be an AE, man. I'm going to be an account executive, man. I want to make that money. Six-figure job, baby. Closing deals. Prospect, nah, man, that's bitch work, man. I'm coming six months, 12 months, work my way up the ranks, man, and be, be an AE, you know? So... If there's an SDR or BDR right now, just jumped in, don't know shit about tech, and they want to become an AE just like you, what are the main fundamentals and roadmap advice you can give them right now? Bomb them. Uh, the question is for an SDR to become an AE or just an, an SDR just getting the feet under them? Just uh, the question around. The whole process of uh, what advice would you give them the, the to – to do, to be that rock star, to do it right and not the wrong way and to think long-term. Yeah. That's, yeah. I mean, uh, I, so the beauty of sales is everybody does their job differently, right? There's not many other professions where you can sit down with somebody and they're like, this is the way we do it. This is it. In sales, you can have someone that does something very differently and see a different result. You know, I, I, I tried a lot of things that uh, people on my team are very good at, right? Cold calling, not very good at cold calling. Um, and I've tried some stuff that they do. I haven't seen success with it. I do stuff that, that, that feels natural to me and that works. That's what I stick to. Um, and vice versa. You know, the thing with sales is you can see the person next to you that's sitting next to you and saying, wow, th- you know, he or she is doing great. They just crushed their quota. What are they doing? You can see their emails, try to copy what they're doing. It's not going to work, right? You got to put some use sauce on it, right? So I, I would say the main thing that you can do if you start off in an SDR role is sit down with everybody on your team. Like literally just sit, have a one-on-one with everybody in your team when you first start off. What, what works for you? What doesn't work for you? Get a list of that. Try all that stuff out. Um, and then you can start formulating your own style, right? You have a little bit of stuff from, from, from her. You have a little bit of stuff from him. Grab stuff from other people, right? Sales is a copy and paste business. Use, use something someone else did, right? But put a little twang on it. Put, put your own little um, twist on it. Um, and then also sit down with the, with the AEs, right? You're going to be paired with an AE. Um, you know, don't be like, okay, when can I get promoted? But sit down with them or her and say, you know, you were previously an SDR. What did you do that made you stand out? Or, 
you know, maybe they weren't an SDR in the past. What, what would you like to see an SDR do that would make them stand out to uh, get that path of AE, right? So I think it's just about having you sitting down, having conversations, uh, getting feedback, right? Um, good things, but also bad things, stuff to avoid. That's important stuff as well. What would you avoid? What would you not do? Um, and then just try them out. Figure out what works for you, right? Everybody's different. There's my style does not, if you try doing what I do, Jax, you might not see the same, the same amount of success. And if I try doing what you do, I might not see the same success, but I can grab something a little bit from you, put it into my own style, my own cadence, and that, that might work, right? So it's, it's hard because sales, you can get jealous very easily. You can see someone doing very well. Everyone's numbers are on the board and you want to, you, you want to kind of jumpstart that. Well, I want to get to that number. Okay, well, let's figure it out. How are you going to get there? So I, I would give that advice. Don't worry about the dashboards. Focus on your own dashboard. Don't look at your neighbor's dashboard. Don't worry about their quota. Everyone's style is different. Find something that you like. One thing you like from somebody else, try it in your own style. And that's how you start developing uh, that swagger. That's how you start developing and, and getting into a groove, which is, which will help you out in the long run. <laughs> there it is. There, oh, there it is. That's why you're a 2019 SDR beast, bro. That's why. <laughs> Here's the problem. SDR, BDR comes in nowadays. Here you go. 10-step cadence. Stick to it. Oh, fuck, man. It's not working, man. Hey, man, I want to try other things. Nah, you got to stick to this. Man, some of it are too cocky. They, they don't ask for help. They don't go around. They see someone over there. Oh, shit, guys. Did you see that? Vincent just hit numbers. Word? Oh. Hey, congrats, bro. And inside, like, sitting there hating, shit like that, being a little bitch about it. And really, you know, it's that sense of jealousy and that competitiveness. But you just hit the nail on the head, Vincent. And that's exactly how it should be everywhere, but it doesn't. Really, you're just getting – I, I tell the story a lot, too. You're, 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 you're a witch, right? SDR, yeah. BDR witch. You're mixing a potion. And you're like, all right, uh -huh. get some Vincent Montano in there. Throw a little piece in there. Hey man, we grab Tony over there, throw it in the potion. Oh, let me grab Josh, let me grab Jennifer. And you're mixing your own potion in there, you know? And once you do that, voila, you now have the magic potion, quote unquote. And I like that. <laughs> yeah, I like man, that. I love it. That's good shit, man. That's good stuff. All right. So, uh, Vincent, just to wrap things up here, is there anything that we missed that you want to share um, during this time? Was there anything else? Um, no, we, we, we covered a lot, man. Um, we talked about like the, the transformation of sales, uh, you know, uh, how BDRs can kind of make a name for themselves. Um, yeah, I, I would say one thing, hit me up on LinkedIn. I know Jax is killing it with the content. Jax, <laughs> Jax Goggins, I know. Um, but yeah, <laughs> connect with me on LinkedIn okay. and, um, I, I'm, I'm always looking to learn. So if you have something that Again, that maybe that you're very good at, or, or maybe something that you always avoid. I always want to know that because, again, I, I want to learn, take that in. Also, willing to share some stuff on my end that works. Um, and I really like the SDR community that's being built on LinkedIn. I feel like everyone's really just not competitive and more supportive. So I, I really like that. Yeah, definitely. Oh, and uh, one more thing, totally forgot, and it's totally on my end because um, making it there's no, there was no agenda, it's just straight raw and vibe. Uh, can you tell us a little real quick about your operation? No, Project Grow not operation growth it's project yeah. project <laughs> project growth that's right from the um, projects from projects son <laughs> yeah i mean real quick it's just really about uh just personal growth i, I i'm really into that and I, I know you are as well um yeah. so i just have different guests on that it, honestly i had the podcast for selfish reasons and i think everyone has podcasts for selfish reasons they kind of want to have these conversations like and it's a good excuse to have them like I'm sure you've learned so much from salespeople that you've had on your podcast, right? So selfishly, oh, you want to have someone on the podcast that you maybe look up to, or maybe you want to, you want to learn from. And I think that's the reason why I just started. I, uh, it's, it's more focused on overall like personal growth, whether that's like finance, uh, you know, or not really finance fit, like fitness or, uh, entrepreneurship, even some sales episodes, marketing. I try to just keep it pretty broad, but with the whole goal of like, okay, let's, let's take all this information and, and, and we can use it in, in one way. So it's really just focused on overall personal development, personal growth. Um, again, for selfish reasons, I want to have these conversations with these people and learn from them. So, and if you think it's valuable as well, you can listen to it as well. <laughs> yeah. Bam. There you go. And uh, there you have it guys. Um, selfish reason. And you're absolutely right. That's why I have you on, man. I got to just have to pick your brain, bro. <laughs> <laughs> 
nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah nothing wrong. It's all sales, baby. All sales. All That's right, it. you guys. And uh, this wraps it up for the One Up Sales Development Podcast. Vincent Montano, 2018-2019 SBR Beast AE, now over at Demand Base. Thank you for hopping on, brother. We truly appreciate you. Thanks, Jackson.